हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल In this video I'll be discussing a interesting case of high hyperopia 30 year old male who presented to me with the expectation that he wants spectacle free vision for his job so what are the options here and if I'm considering CLE which IOL and which formula to be used so this patient has a plus 6 and plus 7 manifest refraction and on cyclopedic refraction is much higher Now, if I consider corneal refractive procedure, if cornea is okay, there is a high chance of residual error because most machines do not allow such a high refractive error correction. Also, there is a high regression and poor quality of vision because you are steepening the cornea, and always there might be a sl slightly decentered ablation of the cornea. If I consider fakey KIL, generally we require aqueous depth, that is, from the endothelium to the lens surface of at least three millimeter for hyperopic fakey KIL for myopic. 2.8 is okay now if i am considering a clear lens extraction then one thing we have to look for is a angle kappa which is given by the chang waring cord also known as cord mu here it is 0.4 which is less than 0.6 so it is okay but the angle alpha which is ix plus iy which is uh, 0.7 plus 0.1 which is 0.8 is higher than 0.6 Now, uh, whether we should be worried about high angle alpha or high angle kappa is debatable. So, most recommendations suggest that less than 0.6 is ideal. But what I have found personally in these patients who have high refractive errors is that even if there is high angle alpha or kappa, they accept the issues which might be slightly higher abrasions. Is because we are correcting their very high refractive error and giving them much better glass-free vision. so it depends on your interaction and your discussion with the patient so this is the il master 700 print out and i am going to use the barrett formula though there are many other formula which are suggested for hyperopic eyes like haggis and hofer q but i generally use barrett formula which gives uh, quite satisfying results in these patients of course these are outliers so that means whenever you have axial length of uh, say less than 21 and uh, more than say 26 and also you have to look at the anterior chamber depth if it is too deep say more than 3.5 or it is too shallow say less than 2.5 you expect some issues or some refractive error post operatively so this is the surgical video no nucleus cross is expected so i just want to make sure that the ccc is nice well centered and adequate size around 4.8 to 5 mm so i have a good optic coverage of the from the ccc margin so this just ensures that the long term centration and the position of the il is more stable and i'm going to do just fake aspiration so nice cortex cleaving hydrodissection is always beneficial in these cases and if you can see the parameters of the machine that i'm going to use i'm going to use centurion system which has active fluidics so i'm going to keep the iop of 20 so this patient young patient slightly elastic sclera as you expect in younger patients so if you keep lower iop it's more comforting for the patient otherwise you sometimes have deepening of the anterior chamber which is more so with myopic eyes not in hyperopic eyes as such so the fake aspiration is done and then cortex removal and the iol because this patient has high iol power of which is calculated as 34 diopters you have to make sure that you have the right il power available so there are few companies which, which make uh, the higher il powers or lower il powers even for trifocal or ed of iol so you can choose between that these lenses and this is a plate haptic design which uh, i generally choose because i feel that the centration over a long term is much better with plate haptic iols when you are using hydrophilic iols of course with hydrophobic Uh, designs i think the centration is maintained because these are sticky lenses with hydrophilic uh, i feel the this uh, plate haptic design works better now it's very important to remove the entire viscoelastic from the anterior chamber and from the bag to make sure that post operatively there are no iop spikes patient should be very comfortable post operatively 
now on table also you can see that the Perkins images are falling within the central zone of this uh, trifocal aisle so I expect good centration post operatively as well and good vision so what happened to this patient one month post operatively I operated both the eyes and uh, if you see I have targeted slightly on myopic side for right eye targeted minus 0.68 and uh, left eye it was minus 0.53 this is because if there is a residual myopia it is easier to correct with uh, laser refractive procedure like uh, surface ablation later so this is one month after surgery and in fact patient has very good vision and if you see the auto refractometer reading it matches what we expected as per the barrett formula on the il master 700 the intermediate vision as well as the near vision is very good and patient appears quite satisfied now one thing about hyperopic correction we should always explain to the patient that he may have slightly reduction in the vision as compared to spectacles because the magnifying effect of spectacles may be gone later so more about uh, such videos on my youtube channel do subscribe to my youtube channel and about this case please do comment and share your thoughts how you will approach this case differently or any information that can be useful for others thank you so much